The Sony A93 is the world's first full-frame global shutter camera, capable of flash sync speeds up to 1 80,000th of a second with no rolling shutter for underwater video and photography. This camera is the most exciting camera this year, and we've had the opportunity to dive with the A93 in the cold water of the Pacific Northwest, so check out this full review. Hey guys, this is Nirpom from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now today I'm reviewing a camera that I've been waiting to review for years. This is the Sony A93 and it's the first camera uh, with a global shutter. Now you might be asking what is a global shutter? It's a new marketing term but it's also an amazing feat of engineering. Uh, it's basically the concept where when you take a photo every single pixel on the sensor is read to the processor at exactly the same time. Now, in order to explain the benefits of that, this is going to be a little bit more of a technical review. I'm going to try to be very simple in my language and explain to you the concepts uh, behind the engineering of the camera so that you understand how this benefits underwater photography, but it benefits underwater photography majorly. Um, if you guys know me or you've been on one of my workshops, you probably know that I've been talking about cameras with global shutters for years. I've been hoping and waiting for them to come out because I knew that they were going to change underwater photography and now that is finally being realized. Now there are some downsides with the A93. It's not a perfect system just yet, but it bodes well for the future of underwater photography and I think it's an amazing, incredible camera to use uh, and it does open up new depths of exploration when it comes to underwater imagery, especially when it comes to using any shutter speed that you want to and I'll get more into that. Now, I might look a little bit tired, and that's because I am. I've had an incredible weekend of diving, uh, and I just got back. I did my first blackwater dives in Washington. We actually went with an experimental group and just jumped in the water and tried blackwater diving in cold water for the first time. Uh, and it was an incredible experience. Thankfully, I had an amazing autofocus system with me. Uh, then I jumped into a secret jellyfish pond uh, where I saw thousands of jellyfish um, and got to practice with the global shutter and with any shutter speed that I wanted um, in that pond. And then I went from there and I did some local dives at Keystone, which are, uh, it's a pretty popular dive site in the Pacific Northwest and that was a lot of fun. And now I'm back and I'm ready to talk about my experience and I'm ready to talk about this camera. So uh, let's get right into it. This is the Sony A93. It's a 24.5 megapixel camera capable of taking 4K video up to 120 frames per second, but that's not why you would get this camera. Uh, it is a photo-oriented camera because it has one of the best autofocus systems in the world with a separate AI autofocus processor, just like the Sony A7R5, which I also reviewed. Um, it can also uh, take raw photos up to 120 frames per second. Now, that is just incredible. Um, it's basically raw video at that point, but uh, it opens up a whole world of imagery when it comes to um, pelagic photos. If you want to capture quick action, sea lions, bait balls, um, sharks, anything like that. But when you're limited by your strobe recycling time, 
it could or could not be a benefit to you, depending on what kind of underwater photographer you are. Uh, the camera also has um, eight stops of in-body image stabilization. So if you have a stabilized lens, you combine it with the stabilization on the camera, you're basically able to shoot at shutter speeds much lower than you normally would be without getting motion blur um, on your hands. Combined with an electronic shutter and no mechanical shutter, there's basically no vibration when you take a photo. Uh, and that means your images, no matter what, are going to be very tack sharp, uh, more than you would have with previous DSLRs other mirrorless cameras with mechanical shutters um, and any camera that doesn't have an in-body image stabilization system. So uh, I'm very, very excited about the A93, but like I said, it's just the beginning of what underwater photography will become. I predict that this is just the first step uh, in many when it comes to having all cameras have global sh shutters uh, in the future. Um, and let's get into why that's important. So let's talk about a global shutter. Now, in the last two to three years, shutters have actually been changing from being mechanical, where you can actually see a shutter flip down and up, to electronic. Now, uh, the first step in removing the mechanical shutter was just to remove the mechanical components. So once you remove that, what you're left with is a sensor that's going to take a photo electronically by reading the light. Uh, now, originally, uh, cameras were able to read the light by using what's called a rolling shutter. That's basically every pixel will read data to the processor um, in a row. So it goes line by line all the way down the sensor. Uh, now, if you've ever heard of rolling shutter, you might know that it makes your video look a little bit jelloey or wobbly, um, or it creates weird artifacts in your images, like bending. Um, if you like look at a golf club swinging, it'll look like it's bending. Uh, well, that's what happens when every line in the sensor is read out to the processor. So that's rolling shutter. Now, what Nikon, uh, Canon, and Sony have all started doing is they've started to increase the processing power on their cameras. They want to eliminate the need for every line to be read out to the processor, um, and instead they want every pixel to be read simultaneously. Now that is the concept of a global shutter. Until now, that wasn't possible with the current processing power um, that we've had in cameras. Well, with the A93, the processing power is powerful enough that every single pixel on the sensor is read out at exactly the same time. And that's what a global shutter is. The way Sony was able to do this was by stacking sensors. So there's actually two sensors kind of stacked on top of each other. Both are reading at the same time and that increases the processing capability of the camera itself. But when you stack sensors, there is another downside and that is a slight loss in dynamic range. And that is the amount of details you're going to get from the highlights to the shadows in your image. Uh, the base ISO for the A93 is ISO 250, which means you're losing about, you know, a stop and a half of dynamic range there um, versus a camera that would be at base ISO of 100. Now that's just a rough estimate. I'm sure there's actual numbers published online, uh, but you are losing some dynamic range. But the benefits of a global shutter far outweigh the downside. And that's because a global shutter allows you to have first no rolling shutter in your video. So if you're gonna pan your video, there's not gonna be the jello -y effect. But for underwater photography, what's more important is a global shutter allows you to use flash or underwater strobes at any shutter speed. So if you're new to underwater photography, that might not seem like a big deal. But if you are a seasoned photographer, you will know that every camera is limited by a sync speed. Now, a sync speed is basically the maximum shutter speed that you can use with your strobes, and that's defined by the camera, not the strobes. So most sync speeds are going to be around 1 200th of a second, 1 250, sometimes if you're lucky, 1 320. With the Sony A93, there is no sync speed. You can basically use your strobes all the way up to 1 80,000th of a second. And that's where it gets interesting in terms of what that means for underwater photography. Well, first, that means that you can completely control your ambient light because the shutter is what controls the amount of ambient light you're getting into your image. So that what that means is you can increase your shutter speed all you want and still use strobes, but get black backgrounds while everything is lit by your strobes. Um, as you know, shutter speed doesn't actually affect the amount of strobe light that you're getting onto your um, subject. So let's say that you're pointing directly at the sun and you want to eliminate all the sun like coming from the sun, 
Well, now you can increase your shutter speed way past 1 250th of a second, still get your strobes on the subject, but get a nice even background with your sunlight. And that's what I was practicing with underwater uh, with the A93. So the way I see it for underwater photography, there's basically two shots that can benefit from a global shutter. One will be your macro photography where you want a black background. It'll be a lot easier to get your black backgrounds because you can shoot at a much higher shutter speed, eliminate all the ambient light, and now you can get black backgrounds in your shots. Uh, so if you're a macro photographer, the A93 is a must have. Now, uh, if you do a lot of sunball photography, that's the second kind of shot that will benefit from a global shutter. Sunball photography is basically where you point your camera right at the sun, you increase your shutter speed as much as you can. Previously it was limited by the sync speed, now it's not. Uh, you allow all the sunlight to basically condense into a ball um, that looks really nice with the rays going through the water. And then you can take your photos with your strobes, hopefully around full power um, in order to compensate. And uh, you end up getting really nice images with the sunballs. Well, this does a really good job of that. However, the main caveat is there's also a loss in dynamic range, which means that you're not going to get as much detail in your sunball shots because you've got these strong highlights and deep shadows. Um, and there's just not going to be as many details in between and you'll be able to see that in my photos pretty soon here. Now before we take a look at some images, I want to talk a little bit about some revelations I had while shooting the camera underwater with underwater strobes. Uh, so the first is that TTL circuitry actually very much affects your imagery. Um, now, for those of you that don't know what TTL is, it basically stands for through the lens. Uh, and what it is, is it's the ability for the camera to tell your strobes exactly how much power to output. Uh, so it's basically like having automatic strobe power. Um, so it's a circuit that plugs into your camera, whether it's through a TTL uh, flash trigger or a TTL converter. In this case, I was using a TTL converter with this Eichlite housing. Uh, it will plug into your camera and then send a signal over to your strobes telling it what power to output it at. So when I had my Eichlite uh, TTL converter attached to my Eichlite DS230 strobe, I shot the DS230s pretty much the whole weekend. Um, I was using a TTL hot shoe. Now this TTL hot shoe actually has a different design than a manual hot shoe. So those of you that use sync cords will probably know um, about this. Now, this is a TTL hot shoe. It's gonna have uh, more connection, more connectivity to the hot shoe of the camera itself than a manual hot shoe. And that TTL hot shoe basically told the camera, well, you've got a TTL flash connected to your camera itself. Even if I was able to use the TTL converter uh, to switch to a manual circuit. So those of you that have shot TTL before might know that you can actually switch between manual and TTL when you're shooting your strobes uh, just using the converter in most cases or the strobe. Well, that doesn't help in the case of the A93. If the A93 has a TTL hot shoe connected, it's going to think it's in TTL mode. What that ends up doing is it tells the camera to have a sync speed at 1 500th of a second, which is pretty limiting. So I was unfortunately not able to go past 1 500th of a second during my tests. Now that's a huge improvement from 1 250th of a second, but when you think about it, what are you really gaining if your base ISO is now 250 versus 100? You're not really gaining that much in terms of benefit. So if you're shooting TTL, you're actually gonna be stuck with a pretty normal camera. So what that means is you need to make sure that you're actually shooting with a manual hot shoe with your strobes in manual mode in order to get the benefits of the um, higher shutter speeds with the global shutter. So I'm actually disappointed to say that I'm going to have to do this review again in some way, shape or form uh, that shows what it's like to use a manual hot shoe and manual circuitry with uh, the A93. And that's because that's what I need to get to shutter speeds higher than 1 500th of a second. Um, there is some evidence online that shows that when you shoot at higher shutter speeds, like 1,000th, one, 1, 1, 10,000th, 1, 20,000th of a second, you do need a flash that is able to output power uh, in full power at the speeds that your camera is at uh, when it comes to the shutter speed. I don't know which underwater strobes will be able to do that. To be honest, every underwater strobe is eventually going to have to be tested for compatibility with global shutter uh, to kind of give us an idea of what an ideal shutter speed is going to be. 
So even if I was able to shoot higher than 1 500th of a second, my results are going to vary vastly between strobe models. Um, and that's kind of the issue. We're at the forefront of technology right now. We don't know what the ideal shutter speeds are for any of the strobe models. Uh, and I'm going to have to find that out and let you guys know, um, especially as more cameras with global shutters come out. So with all that said, let's jump to my photos. You can check them out. You can take a look at some of the um, details and quality. If you ever want full res photos, just email us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. I'm happy to send you guys some full res photos. Uh, and after that, we'll jump back into the rest of the review, which is pretty straightforward um, as the other aspects of the camera are relatively straightforward. All right, so I've jumped into Adobe Lightroom so I can show you exactly what I was able to do with the A9 III and some of my favorite photos from over the weekend. Now, the first photo I want to talk about is my favorite Blackwater photo that I took over the weekend. You can see it's this nice jellyfish photo with a copepod that's actually hanging out on top of the jellyfish. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And what this photo really exemplifies is the high shutter speed that you're able to shoot with uh, the A9 III. Now, I was shooting TTL, which you can see was pretty accurate, uh, but I was limited to 1 500th of a second. But 1 500th of a second is still enough to freeze the frame and get a really crisp image of something that's moving through the water water column pretty fast. Uh, so combined with having strobes freeze the frame as well, you get a really nice crisp, sharp image. And this was taken at night, but if it was taken there during, during the day, having that high shutter speed allows you to eliminate the ambient light uh, and get a nice black background as well. Now the one downside of the A9 III for black water diving is the fact that it is not a super high uh, resolution camera. It's only a 24 megapixel camera back in the day 24 megapixels would have been super high resolution uh, now it's kind of mid middle of the range resolution um, i feel that 24 megapixels yields itself to lower noise um, but it would be nice to have a little more resolution on a black water dive uh, especially you can see in this photo I, had, I did have to crop it a bit and the resolution just wasn't entirely there for me but it is pretty crisp again because i'm shooting at 1 500th of a second uh, let's see i've also got some nice black water images here. Um, now you can see that the autofocus, it was a little bit back focused on this image. I would have liked to see the autofocus a little bit farther forward. Uh, that said, almost all of my shots were pretty well in focus. And that is due to the, uh, the autofocus tracking, which I find to be one of the fastest autofocus systems I've ever shot. Um, it was on par with the Sony a7R5. Uh, and you can see, I don't really have actually that many Blackwater images here, but for the most part, they were pretty much in focus, which is very impressive because you guys probably know how hard it is to take Blackwater images. All of these photos were for the most part in focus. Um, and that's pretty amazing. I was using the Sony 90 millimeter macro, which is a fairly slow lens compared to, let's say a Nikon 60 millimeter macro lens. Uh, but when you combine it with a built-in autofocus system that's just fantastic in the body of the camera, you're going to have a fast lens no matter what. Um, so let's move on to some of my wide-angle images. And now we can see what we're really talking about when it comes to dynamic range. Uh, so I mentioned that you lose about a stop and a half of dynamic range when you're shooting with the A9 III just because of how the stack sensors are designed. You can kind of see that in this image. If you look at the highlights in the sunball that I have, the jellyfish is in sharp detail, which is great. Um, there's a, the background is a little bit out of focus as can be expected because I'm focusing on the jellyfish, but you can see that there's not much detail in the center of the sun. So you are losing a little bit of dynamic range um, and it goes into nice details in the shadows. You can see a little bit of the, the backscatter and, and other particles in the water. Um, and the gradient overall is fairly nice. You're not getting a big white splotch and then, uh, you know, banding or anything like that. Um, I, in fact, there is a little bit of banding. You can see it very vaguely um, in the progression from the highlights to the shadows, but it's really not too bad. Uh, so I'm not really complaining about dynamic range. I think the benefits of having that high shutter speed are totally worth it, uh, especially in images like this next one here that I took of kelp in the sunlight. Um, so let's move on to the kelp in the sunlight. And you can see in this photo uh, that I'm able to get 
the background rays of sunlight um, in about two feet of water and still have a really dark area uh, behind my subject so I can isolate the subject from the background with my strobe power because again the strobe power is not affected by the shutter speed which in this case is 1 400th of a second. Uh, so having those high shutter speeds really allow you to shoot in shallow water with a lot of sunlight in the middle of the day and isolate your subjects and get uh, a lot of nice strobe power on them. I think another great example of that is this jellyfish photo I took right here. Again, I'm in a couple inches of water. I'm pointed not directly at the sun, but at the sky. You can see from the blue in the water. Um, but because I'm shooting at a high shutter speed of 1 400th of a second, I'm really able to isolate uh, the jellyfish from the background, but still get a little bit of that blue um, from the snail's window. So all of that uh, is just combined to give you more tools in your arsenal to take the best photos you possibly can. All right, guys, so welcome back to the rest of this review. So I wanna start off by talking about what the A93 is actually designed for. Uh, the A93 is a very much sports-oriented camera. It is capable of calculating autofocus 120 times per second, as well as burst shooting up to 120 frames per second in raw uh, photo mode. So that's incredible. Both those features working in conjunction with each other make it the perfect camera for pelagic photography. For anybody that needs quick action uh, to capture the world's fastest animals, this will do the trick. Uh, now, if you're a normal underwater photographer and you're shooting with strobes and you're limited by the recycle time of the strobes, you might want to look at something more like the Sony a7R5 uh, where you have 61 megapixels of resolution and you're not limited by the resolution. But I have to say in my experience using the camera, the autofocus system was as good as the a7R5. Um, now I did have some hiccups because I was using a Metabones adapter with the Canon 8-15 to and not a Sigma MC11. Uh, so I did feel like the autofocus was actually pretty slow with that combination of wide angle lens. Um, and the Sony 90 worked pretty well, uh, but when I was blackwater diving, it's notoriously hard to get focus. So I did struggle more than I did in my experience with the a7R5. Um, on paper, they're supposed to be the exact same autofocus system with an AI autofocus processor that really drives the autofocus system separately. And I also wanted to mention that most of the time that when I was shooting blackwater photos, I was using the autofocus tracking mode, which actually worked really well. I was able to easily track all my subjects. Uh, however, when I was doing some macro photography afterwards with normal fish subjects, I noticed that the animal eye autofocus tracking didn't really work as well as I had experienced at times uh, with the a7R5. It worked a few times, but it didn't um, you know, capture very well on those dives. It could have just happened to be the subjects. It's so hard to do a side-by-side -side comparison when you're diving underwater. Now, let's talk briefly about video. Clearly, video is not the focus of the A93, but if you are a complete hybrid shooter, you would still be very happy with it, especially because one, there is no rolling shutter anymore on the A93, um, so that's a huge benefit. Of course, most underwater videographers are not trying to pan very fast, uh, so they don't have that issue. Um, but the second reason is uh, this camera is capable of 4K up to 120 frames per second using the full width of the sensor, uh, and it's actually oversampled from 6K um, at 60 frames per second, which makes it even sharper at 60 frames per second. I shot most of my dives at 60 frames per second, thoroughly enjoyed shooting with it, uh, combined with the in-body image stabilization, uh, it was really easy to, to do handheld video, even with macro video. Um, and the A93 has all of the same log profiles that you see on high-end Sony video cameras uh, like the ZV-E1, the A7S III. Finally, you get all those amazing features for the very low price of $5,999.99. Now, obviously, that's a pretty uh, expensive camera. It is getting close to the Sony A1 and Sony's flagship cameras. You're paying for that global shutter. You're paying for, to have the cutting edge in technology, and that's what the A93 is. Uh, I think it's a justified price point, especially for underwater photography, considering that you do actually benefit from some of those features in the A93. Um, but it is a steep price point. So uh, this is really a camera for professionals or people that really want to experiment uh, with Global Shutter and see what it can do and be the first ones to get that in their hands. I'm sure there will be new cameras in the future that will also have Global Shutter. I'm sure Nikon is on the cusp because the Z8 was very similar, um, but it still had some rolling shutter. Uh, and I'm guessing Canon is probably also on the cusp of doing so, but this is the first Global Shutter camera and that's why we're seeing such a high price point. 
So that's basically my full review of the camera. Let's talk a little bit about the underwater lenses and housings uh, that are available for this camera. Um, and then I'll wrap it up completely. So uh, just a quick overview. I mentioned this before, but I shot most of my images uh, for wide angle with the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye with the Metabones adapter. I thought the autofocus system was atrocious. Uh, I would not recommend that combination. Instead, I would probably look at the Sigma MC11 adapter, which has better autofocus for photography. The Sigma MC11 does not have autofocus for video, uh, so you're kind of looking at the Metabones at that point. Um, so I was happy to have it because I was shooting video as well. Uh, other good wide angle lenses include the um, recent Sony uh, power zoom 16 to 35. That's a newer Sony uh, zoom rectilinear wide angle lens. I think it's great if you want to use that to film or photograph sharks or dolphins or subjects that are a little bit farther away. Um, so I think that's a great rectilinear wide lens. Uh, of course, there's also the option to use the 28 to 60 millimeter kit lens uh, with wet lenses if you are not a cam shooter. Um, and that's kind of a cool, versatile combination. And finally, for macro photography, I really like the Sony 90 millimeter. I don't like the Sony 50 millimeter. That moving focusing barrel just really does not do very well for autofocus. Um, but the Sony 90 millimeter is great. The Sigma 105 millimeter macro is also great. Uh, I would say it's better for photography than it is for video. And um, those are kind of the two macro options that I would look at for this camera. Now, one lens that I'm pretty excited about but I haven't tested is the new Sigma 15 millimeter for E-mount. So stay tuned for that. You can buy that um, online on our website and hopefully we'll update the port charts on that pretty soon as well. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the lenses that I used in this review. So let's move on to the underwater housing options for the A93. As I mentioned, there is a Nauticam anodized aluminum housing option available. Uh, that's on our website, or you can email us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. We'll get you set up with that. Uh, and finally, of course, we have the Eichlite polycarbonate option that I did for my review here, um, which has actually introduced a few upgrades that I want to talk about. Before I talk about it, I should mention that there are likely going to be uh, A93 housings from um, let's see, Aquatica, Merlux, Isoda. We'll update all of those product pages as housings come up. We'll update the review as well, um, so you'll be able to see that. Uh, but so far, there's really only the Nauticam and Eichlite hop options available right now. So this is a polycarbonate housing, as I mentioned. Uh, it's the most affordable of the housings that we offer, and it's a great option for anybody that uh, basically wants to do anything. I, it, it's um, compatible with a wide range of lenses, including uh, the Canon 8-15 fisheye, the 16-35 Sony, the 90mm uh, macro. It's a dry lock uh, 200 DL. Uh, what that means is it's capable of going 200 feet deep uh, and it uses the dry lock port system, uh, which is designed for full frame mirrorless cameras and it can use larger uh, full frame lenses as well. Um, so one of the coolest upgrades that I've seen on this housing is that Eichlite has now um, added these new hard plastic knobs, uh, which have ridges that help improve grip, especially if you are um, using gloves in cold water. And I really, really enjoyed uh, using the new knobs. I thought it was much easier to hold turn uh, than the older knobs. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I'm guessing just looking at the way these knobs are designed, you might actually be able to get replacement knobs if you currently own an Eichlite housing. So make sure you reach out to us about that. Now, uh, the camera goes on a tray and slides right into the housing, which allows you to have full control of the camera. Every single button, uh, dial and knob is compatible on this housing, um, including the very cool uh, photo to video selector switch. So it's actually really easy to switch between photo and video. Um, and you can actually set your camera so that it won't remember the settings between the two. So when you switch it, the settings will change as well. Um, so I was doing a lot of that. Uh, the movie button is really nice and red and very apparent. All the buttons are labeled on the back. Um, the housing also has a clear back, so if you were to get any water droplets or anything inside, you should be able to catch it before anything major happens to the camera. The camera is also mounted on a tray, which means that it's going to take a little while for water to actually get up to the camera, and that's another added layer of security. Um, not to mention the vacuum valve, which is included with the housing, but not the pump, so I recommend getting the pump. Uh, and that allows you to set a vacuum seal on the housing before you get in the water to make sure that, okay, you're good 
water's not gonna come into the housing and you'll know that right away uh, just by doing a vacuum seal. Uh, one of the other cool updates that Eichelite added for me here was the data transfer cable. So it actually fits onto an M16 port um, or M16 bulkhead on your Eichelite housing. It screws right in uh, and it allows you to basically charge your camera and take and download photos and videos off your camera while the camera is still inside the housing. So if you don't want to take the camera out of the housing for the whole dive trip, you no longer need to do so. Um, and that's a pretty cool feature as well. So uh, I talked a little bit about TTL during the beginning of this review. The TTL I found to be very accurate. I find Eichelade's TTL with Sony cameras is probably the most TTL or accurate TTL on the market. Um, and that was the case when I was shooting the whole time. Uh, it was fantastic, it was quick and easy to use. I was able to shoot continuous low burst speeds with TTL um, and almost every shot was uh, properly exposed. So it really increased the number of shots that I had um, at the end of this review. And uh, anytime you can increase your success rate in any way is great. Uh, I mentioned the issues with TTL with a 93 as well, but I do think the benefits outweigh the downsides. Um, from a practical standpoint, it's nice to have those extra, uh, you know, extra fractions of a second of a shutter speed. But from a pra practical standpoint, it's better to have properly exposed photos with TTL. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, like I said before, I really think the A93 is designed for people that want to be on the cutting edge of technology, experiment with unlimited shutter speeds, uh, and play around with a camera that has incredible burst rates and autofocus. Uh, if you are just getting into underwater photography or you really care more about the image quality, I might look at some other options like the A7CR, um, the A7C2, maybe the A6700. But uh, overall, if you are uh, wanting to experiment and play around with your photography, you can't go better than the A93. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that I couldn't do the full set of features available on the A93, but I will in the future. And I do think this is a very exciting time to be a photographer. I can't wait for the future of underwater photography because it's going to really um, be a whole nother world in just a couple years. So if you have any questions or comments, make sure you drop them in the comments below. We'll get right back to you. Uh, if you wanna get set up with a system for the A93, make sure you email us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com or you can hop on our website and write to us in our chat feature. There are real live people behind that feature. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And with that, we'll see you again soon. Uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll, we'll see you out there diving.